Welcome to another episode, you guys. This is Janine, one of the hosts of the Savvy Scribe podcast. Today we have a question from one of our Savvy Scribe collective members in the Facebook group. Hey, if you're not part of that group, come on over to Facebook. We'd love to have you join us. Even if you've never written anything, but this is something you're interested in doing, we'd love to help you on your journey. So take a listen to this awesome quick win. Do I really need to publish on LinkedIn for it to be useful? I don't know. Carol will tell us. Get a pen and piece of paper or press replay if you're on a nice walk right now. Enjoy, and we'll talk soon. Welcome to The Savvy Scribe, a podcast for freelance healthcare and medical writers who want to start or grow their business. Your hosts, Carol Bush and Janine Kalbach, will help you build a profitable health writing business without having to spend years figuring it out on your own. Now, let's join the conversation. Good day, Savvy Scribes. Thanks so much for listening. We love getting emails from you guys or messages on LinkedIn or Twitter or in our Facebook community. And actually, you know what? Today's Q&A episode is brought to us. We love hearing from you, Savvy Scribes. We're so glad that you're finding value in the episodes. We're glad to hear that our downloads are helping you get organized and our stories are helping you take action. Our favorite thing is to get questions and feedback. So we love, love, love when you email us or connect with us on LinkedIn. And in fact, today's session is about LinkedIn that Rebecca sent to me via LinkedIn. How cool is that? So for today's Q&A session, Rebecca asked, do you need to be posting on LinkedIn for it to work for you? Well, the great answer is no, and I'm going to tell you why. Of the over 600 million accounts on LinkedIn, yes, folks, I said 600 million. Apparently, only 1% of us actually post updates on here. Are you one of them? Of the over 600 million accounts on LinkedIn, yes, I said 600 million. You heard me right. Apparently, only 1% of us actually post updates on the platform. Are you one of them? I know I find that when I post articles and updates on LinkedIn, I get inquiries from potential clients. And I'm not alone in this. I took a look on the internet. Yes, did my research like a good healthcare professional. Looking at some statistics from Demand Wave. LinkedIn is the top social media channel for lead generation, according to Demand Wave. And out of the 89% of B2B, that means business to business, marketers using LinkedIn, 62% reported generating leads through this network. So actually, I took a look at where my leads had come from over the course of five years. And you know what was really surprising? Intellectually, I was like, yeah, I think there were quite a few that came through LinkedIn. Almost 90% of the connections were originally through LinkedIn. Isn't that cool? Also, as a result of webinars or speaking opportunities, not just online, but locally as well. And the second thing that people did after they heard my webinar or uh, heard me speak locally was they connected with me on LinkedIn and asked me about working together. So it might not always be the primary way, but it definitely was the secondary way. And in fact, this week, I worked with two health writing clients on their LinkedIn profiles. One of those clients it's planning to write posts and aims to publish articles. And the other client has absolutely zero intention of writing any updates or, in fact, commenting on anyone else's updates. And that's okay. That person just wasn't comfortable doing that yet. However, they did recognize the power of having an accurate and up-to-date LinkedIn profile. So what we did do was update their LinkedIn profile, and added a pending recommendation. I'll talk a little bit more about that shortly. So first, in our training and when Janine and I are working with our health writing clients, 
and as well as our own um, our own consulting clients, we recommend that clients do publish articles and share updates. And what are the three immediate reasons why? Well, to establish thought leadership, connect with your network, and raise your profile online. However, just step back and think about it. Maybe all you need is somewhere for your potential customer to check you out. So let's talk a little bit about why you may not need to post anything for LinkedIn to work for you. I think this is a great first step for people, especially uh, those of you who might be out there just beginning or getting up to speed and going, yeah, I'm having a little bit of fear and I'm not exactly sure that I'm comfortable with publishing. However, you do want to um, conduct some outreach and grow your client base and you want people to know that you are a health writer. So think about it. Other professionals, other professionals like lawyers or accountants, how do they get clients? A lot of work is still word of mouth and referral. Here's the reality folks. We work in a service-based industry just like other professions like lawyers or accountants. How do we get our clients? The fact is a lot of work is still word of mouth and referral. So let's step back and take a look. At a recent in-person event, I was asking one of my health writing colleagues how their last few clients had found them. And that was here in Wichita, Kansas. And she said, oh, it's a Wichita thing. People still go on word of mouth. Well, I'm here to tell you that word of mouth is not limited to this community, nor this state, nor even this country. My connections across the US and globe will say the same thing. If someone recommends you to their client, what's the next natural step? Just like all of us do, they're going to Google you. We all do it, folks. Let's say I was looking for a new accountant and my colleague suggested someone they knew. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to do my own checking first before calling or emailing. Googling is the easiest way to do this. And guess what? What? And take a look. What comes up in the very first few results in Google? You've got it your LinkedIn profile. Now go right out while you're listening and Google yourself. Google some other people in uh, the collective and see, take a look. But I guarantee you that the first few results on Google are going to be, you've got it, your LinkedIn profile. Someone is naturally going to check out your LinkedIn profile. You may or may not have your own website, right? you do have the opportunity to use LinkedIn and take the time to fill in your LinkedIn profile. You may or may not have your own website. You may or may not have a robust portfolio. You do have the opportunity to use LinkedIn and taking the time to fill in your LinkedIn profile gives you credibility. When did you last update your profile? Updating your LinkedIn profile properly with keywords that your ideal client is searching, adding in those skills, expertise, and even making sure your profile photo is a recent one, it all helps for that client to make the decision to pick up the phone or send you an email. Let's give yourself a success tip or an added bonus, you can ask previous clients for a recommendation on your work. We are not able to add our own testimonials on LinkedIn, kind of like you would on your website. So it's important to have someone else write a recommendation for you. This gives you huge amounts of credibility. So take some action. Think about one of the coolest clients you've worked with in the last six months or a year, if you haven't asked them for a recommendation, do so now and ask them to give you a testimonial or a recommendation on LinkedIn. It will make a big difference in your search results 
and engagement. So while I would love, love, love for you to write articles and post updates, maybe all you need for your next client to find you is an up-to-date profile. If you'd like a little refresher, don't forget to check out the episode that Janet had earlier this year about getting your LinkedIn profile up to date. If you're ready to optimize and get your LinkedIn profile set to the next level while you're working on your business, we cover LinkedIn profile training and optimizing in depth in the Savvy Scribe Growth Lab. So get in touch and let's That's give you some That's a wrap for today's visibility. episode of the Savvy Scribe. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed today's show, we'd love for you to subscribe and leave a review on iTunes or your favorite podcast app. Until next time.